Hello and welcome to Mish Music Now. We're all in yellow today. Hope you are too. Hope you got the memo because we really did get that memo. And this is the sunflower that I love so much that decided to volunteer to come into my garden this year. I didn't plant him. I didn't plant any of his buddies either, see? <laughs> There's like five sunflowers on this stalk. Um, haven't had sunflowers for a lot of years in this garden, so who knows, but he's happy, I'm happy. It's a good pair, we're, you know, we're buddies, it's all good. And we're talking about solo singing today, specifically sitting in. This is where your friend has a gig and they have asked you to come sing a song or two. And you're happy, you say, yeah, sounds good, great, uh-oh, wait a minute, what do I do? Uh, how do I count off? What song do I pick? How do I, what do I do at the end? How do I know how to direct traffic and like how many solos the saxophone takes or, you know, whatever. Um, you're probably way more advanced than that, but I mean, you know, some people may have those kinds of basic questions and we're gonna cover it today, okay? There's other sessions of Mish Music Now that you will find answers to other questions about many different things. Keep watching, they're coming out once a week. Um, so, let's set the stage first. Jazz is a team sport. It's not just you with accompanists. That's not what we do in jazz at all. It's about everybody working together, everybody listening, responding, reacting to each other's musical, you know, stuff. And um, so you want to go into it with a spirit of friendliness, um, a smile never hurts, eye contact never hurts. Then you want to be prepared also, especially if you're not used to doing unrehearsed music like in sitting in. So the preparation includes a number of things. The first thing is to choose your song. And it's really important to choose, you know, a song that will work well in this situation. That depends partly on the setting, it depends partly on the players that are playing with you, but generally speaking, you want to stay kind of middle of the road-ish with your song. You want to choose a song you love and that you think that the players will love and of course the listeners will love. Uh, you don't want to go too deep, like something like a Lush Life, you know, it's going to have everybody crying when they're really just having their scallops and steak and they're talking about the movie they went to last week, or whatever, you know, you don't want to get too deep. Um, you don't want to get too contemporary, detour ahead, or something like that. Such a great tune, but in this setting, because you're not using a chart, you're just calling the tune, you don't want to count on them knowing that unless you know that they know that type of tune. Um, and then you also don't want to go too super standard-ish. Um, there's one song I always have in mind about this, and that is the song Fever. I know, a lot of people love it, I know. And it's great, it is a great tune. There's a reason it became a classic. But it's so classic, it's like, you know, too much classic maybe. I don't know, if it were me, I, you know, if I were me, I wouldn't call that tune in a, um, in a jam session situation or, so, or sitting in situation. But I might call um, Beautiful Love, as a swing tune, I might call um, The Nearness of You or something like that as a ballad. Um, there's a lot of great, you know, Jubim tunes, straight eighth tunes. You want to pick a good key also. And that doesn't just mean the key that you most prefer. There are keys that are generally, you know, widely used in jazz settings, especially for standards. And there are keys that are not widely used for jazz standard settings. Generally speaking, sharp keys are not very common in this kind of setting. So you don't want to go to A and to B and to F sharp and to E. Um, you could go to D maybe, then you definitely can do G. But um, you're looking for your flat keys. Um, you know, well, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, maybe D flat, maybe D, but definitely not further in the sharps than D, all right? Because um, it's just not common. Again, the players may love it. I mean, they may not have a problem with it at all. Um, they probably can play in any key, but they may not like to. And it kind of gives you away as a little bit of a newbie if you're asking for a standard 
how high the moon in E. Nobody's going to go to a, a sit-in situation and do that. So I recommend E flat or F. They're very close. Should be fine for you. Okay, and then, and then you walk up to the bandstand and you're going to talk to the band and that'll be your first, um, presumably your first interface with them, your first one-on-one, -on -one, you know. So you're going to go up. Eye contact is a good idea. Um, a pleasant attitude, of course. And uh, you might introduce yourself. Hey, my name's Michelle, you know, and you want to say something like, let's do Beautiful Love in A minor. And um, you don't want to say, I, I want to do beautiful love in A minor. That just feels yucky, right? I want, eh, that's not nice. That's not all inclusive. It's not team spirit ish. Go with let's, let's do this, let's do that. Or you can also use how about. How about beautiful love in A minor? Here's the whole talk down that you want to do. Let's do beautiful love in A minor, medium swing, about like this. Then after you've named what tune you want to do and they look at you with, you know, kind of a, oh, I don't know about that, um, it probably means, that's, that's kind of code for uh, better not go there because either we don't like that tune, we don't dig that tune, or we don't know that tune that well, or we don't like the key you picked, uh, you know, something like that. So that's one reason to have backups up your sleeve, okay? If, uh, if it doesn't feel like it's the right uh, fit for that setting, go to plan B. So that's about it for starters. There actually is a lot more to talk about in sitting in because there's the whole you know, experience that happens when you're in the middle of the song. Who's soloing? How long are they soloing? When do you come back in? Et cetera, et cetera. Then there's the end of the song. What kind of ending are you gonna do? How are you going to cue it, if you're going to cue it, etc., etc. You can get a lot more information from watching more Mish Music Now um, videos. There's more coming actually every week, so they will be building. If you have a preference or a, a request, if you have something you want to uh, ask about, please go to the Mish Music Network Facebook group. That is a good place to catch me. I am hanging out there Pretty much every day I look there, and if you want to post something and ask a question, I would love it. If you want to post a request, like, could you please do more on, you know, the photosynthesis of um, sunflowers and how you, you know, get volunteer beautiful plant life in your garden, whatever. Maybe I can help with that, too. I invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel also, and I'm wishing you the best. Take care. See you next time.